everyone, it's Christina from American Rooted Flower Farm. So if you're new to my channel, uh, I'm in Oakdale, California. I am in zone 9B. I'm gonna update you on the Cosmos. Earlier today, I met the um, entomologist, entomologist, entomologist from the local extension office. He met me out at the farm. When he looked at the Cosmos, he like got to the base of them where all the bubbly um, stuff is at. Um, he wiped it with his finger, he smelt it. He licked it, he put it in his ear, and did all these things with it. No, he smelt it, and he said that it's not a bug issue. It's not a bug issue. Okay, so what is it then? He says that it is a soil-borne pathogen, which means it's a disease. And affecting only the cosmos right now. I have cosmos planted uh, in the front of the farm, two rows up. I have some more Cosmos and they are younger. They are maybe like 60 days old, maybe 70 days. And so all of my Cosmos in the bottom row, all my uh, mature Cosmos that are blooming are affected by this disease, by this pathogen. Your soil contains uh, lots of different pathogens, whether it be good or bad. Um, and the pathogens will affect plants. So the way that I think about it is a pathogen is like a virus and the plant is like a person. So in the atmosphere, say as people, in the atmosphere, we come along viruses and bacteria all the time. When a plant is exposed to a pathogen, it will act a certain way. And when cosmos are exposed to the, this pathogen, it does bad things to them, it makes them sick. Uh, it infects them and it causes all of these symptoms throughout the whole plant. And so one plant that's exposed to the pathogen or is affected by the pathogen, another plant may not be affected by it. Where is the case on my farm? So we have the cosmos that are extremely affected by them. And then we have all the other summer loving annuals like zinnias and sunflower, celosia, amaranth, basil, dill, marigold, calendula, all of these other things are not affected, are not showing symptoms. I don't know specifically what pathogen it is, what disease it is, the entomologist from the local extension office, he took some of the plant parts with him. He took a whole plant. He took uh, a young plant. He took an older plant. He took branches. He took the base. He took the whole plant in general uh, so that he can take it to an associate there at the office that is a pathogen specialist. And then they will get back to me on what exactly uh, the pathogen is so that I can treat it. I asked him if I can still sell the flowers that are that don't seem affected. Even though the plant may be affected, the flowers are not being damaged yet. And he said, yes, I still can sell my flowers. Um, it is, if they look okay, then they're fine to sell. He asked where we got the compost from. He asked if it was a reliable source. I told him that we bought it in, uh, in bulk at a local nursery. And then he asked whether crops were on the, the land prior and I told him grapes. The grapes have been grown there many years ago. I don't know how many years ago, but it wasn't while the owners that own it now were living there. He said that the pathogen that's in the soil is not typically in the soil in soil like mine. If a uh, land has a lot of water, if it's exposed to water very often and is, is often like waterlogged, uh, that it will carry this type of disease, this type of pathogen. But my land is very dry and I'm, I do the watering on it. So throughout the summer like that, it would be dry all the time. So he doesn't necessarily think that the pathogen was already in the soil. He thinks that it was brought there and that it was in the compost. Going further from here, uh, after I find out what the pathogen is, um, I can then decide whether or not I'm gonna treat the soil. Um, I'm thinking against treating the soil because I feel like mother nature will take its course and will take care of the issue. I can do my research and plant specific plants that are not susceptible to being affected by this pathogen in the future. I already know what I have out there. Um, that's probably about 50% that I plan to grow on the farm overall. Um, I still have my fall planting. I'll be starting my fall succession and uh, that will overwinter and then bloom in spring. And so that's a completely different crop of flowers that I planted 
on the farm right now. Uh, so I'll have to do my research and see which ones are susceptible to whatever dis disease this is. That way I don't plant those and waste my time or waste my money on the flowers that most likely will not make it. I'm relieved that we know um, that we have some answers. I hope that you guys are relieved too, knowing that uh, we are getting, we're moving forward and uh, we just wait from here. But at least we know that it's not something that needs to be done. It doesn't need to be taken care of right now. I don't need to spray anything. There's no bugs. The, 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 the ecosystem of bugs is just fine. Um, I, think I don't need to pull those plants because the plants that are still alive, I don't need to pull. Everything's already been exposed to it. Uh, we know that because the Cosmos two rows up uh, have symptoms of the disease. So we know that it is, it's a high chance that it's, it's everywhere. It's not just in that first row or in that randomly in that second row, it's, it's most likely everywhere um, and nothing else is affected by it. So uh, that's a good thing because it could be a lot worse. We could have everything going, we could be losing everything. Um, but just being the Cosmos, I have to be grateful that uh, we're just gonna lose those and I don't have to pull them. I can still use the flowers on the plants that are still producing. Uh, I wish I would have been able to get a video, but I got there after he did, and so I didn't. I didn't want to waste his time and be like, "Hey, can I take a video?" and then slow everything down because he was already. I was already a couple minutes late to getting out there, and so uh, I I just went along, and and just talked with him. So when he was out there today, uh, it was really neat how he. It, it was neat to see how he inspected the plants, and as he was doing it, he was telling me. So like at the base of a plant at the base of the plants, it will, it's either like brown, it's oozing that white foaminess, or it's like enlarged. And so that's how they can tell that it's soil borne because it is affected um, at the soil at the ground level. Uh, that's where the, that's where the damage begins. And so he would like scrape it to see how much of it was dead and how much of it was, how much of the plant was dead and how much was alive. Uh, he cut straight into a younger plant that was up on the second row. He cut into it. We pulled it out because it had some browning on it. He pulled it out and cut into the, the root, the base of the root on it and split it open. And we were able to see like the inside of the root and you could see the inside, how it was, um, it was almost like a vein, but it was browning like around, like as if it were like a chamber in your heart or something or a valve. Uh, it was like the inside and it was like browning. It was like turning, it was like a off white color. It was enlarged and it was like, it didn't look right. And so uh, it was neat to be able to see the science behind it. He really did go to the plants and like wipe off the, the, the nastiness with his bare hand, wipe off the foaminess with his bare hand. He even smelled it. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think to smell it. I was like, does it smell? He says, yeah, it smells rotten. <laughs> so I guess that's plant death that he was smelling but I didn't smell it. Um, and then the maggots were probably just there because uh, it, maggots like that kind of thing, right? I don't know, um, but he didn't see any of those maggots and there wasn't a lot of them. It, it's, um, he said it's definitely not spittle bug and he didn't see any bugs and he knows that it's a disease and not, um, not a pest issue. Find out um, exactly what it is or if I hear from them before that, I'll let you guys know. I really thank all of you who are genuinely concerned for us and the farm and I wanna thank you. So that's it, uh, thanks for watching and remember keep your hands dirty.